Hello, I'm Leo from Shark Points. We are currently working on a heist game set in the early 1970s called The Master Plan. It's a top-down squad-based tactics game where your goal is to put together the right crew, the right equipment and finally plan and execute the biggest heist ever. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the content creation side of things for The Master Plan. We believe that content creation and iteration should be as frictionless as possible. There are numerous examples of great content creation and level editing tools. One of them which is uh, UbiArt that's used at least in the both new Rayman games. Actually if you haven't played those Rayman games, games go ahead and try. It's really really, really fun. Uh, I'll put some links to the video description about UbiArt framework. You should go check them out as well. Um, our game has at least a few parts that need good level editing tools. Uh, one of them is animation, then there's AI, and of course level editing. And today I'm going to show you the current level editing workflow that we have for the master plan. We have built in-game level editing tools before, but when we started to work on the master plan, we decided to just start with some existing open source tools and extend or modify them to our needs. The tool we chose to use uh, is an open source map editor called Tiled. Right, let's get to work. I have set up my screen so that I can see both the level editor and the actual debug version of the game running simultaneously. The debug version of the game watches the asset folder for changes and every time I export the map the in-game level should be reloaded. Let's try to see if it works. Yeah, it seems to work. Next up, I'm going to draw the layout for the level. As you can see, I have only laid out mock-up tiles of what should be where. This is done to make it fast to iterate on the layout of the level without getting bogged down on the details of drawing the actual level. One of the slowest and te most tedious parts of, the, of drawing the level is actually just drawing the wall tiles. To m help make this faster, we use a tiled feature called Auto Mapping. Auto Mapping searches for certain combinations of tiles and then replaces these parts with other combinations. In our case, it searches for placeholder wall tile corners and crossings and replaces them with correct tiles. This leaves it to the computer to do the tedious bits of selecting and drawing the correct tiles and leaves us to just concentrate on the layout of the walls. I'll put some links about auto mapping on the video descriptions. As you can see, the level doesn't update in real time as I'm editing, but only when I export the map. This is something that we need to get rid of as it makes you pause your work unnecessarily. I think that we'll extend tiled with some kind of auto save or auto export functionality so that we don't have to do that manually. Next up, I'll quickly add some more details to the level. You can draw uh, tiles or you can draw arbitrary objects that are rotated or um, positioned uh, freely. Another thing that, that used to be pretty tedious was specifying colliders for tiles. We used to do this manually by typing coordinates for the vertices of the collider polygons. Man, <laughs> that was slow and boring. Tile fortunately comes with Tile Collision Editor. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's still a billion times faster to just draw colliders by hand in, instead of thinking about coordinates, what, what, what should be where, and, um, and then actually typing them down manually. Currently, the Tile Collision Editor doesn't seem to support uh, snapping to pixels, like you see here. <laughs> Uh, so we still sometimes need to clean the collider data manually by hand, but it's still faster to just draw that general shape in tiled and then manually clean it. Tend to tend to do it manually from the beginning. Another tool that we could use for this is perfect, per, perhaps a uh, six editor from the same company that does texture pack, packer, which we actually use as well. Uh, I'll put links to this in the video description. 
we generate the graph that the AI uses for pathfinding from the level data. We could also do this by hand, but it's much, much faster and easier to just generate this from the level data. Currently we just mark the impassable tiles where you cannot walk uh, in the editor metadata for specific tiles, and then those tiles are left out of the graph. We can also add some characters to the map by specifying a spawn point and what should be spawned at those coordinates. I'm going to add one controllable character to the map now. The final thing I'm going to show, you, show today is editing the tile graphics. Iterating on how the tiles look in game can be slow if you need to constantly reload the game and maybe even navigate to the part of the map that you're currently working on. We implemented a very basic system to reload the graphics on the fly to make this kind of iteration much faster. Alright, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you're interested to learn more about the master plan, go visit the website and if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our blog. See you next time.